Hello everybody, my name is Christian Swenson. I do videos here on YouTube about autism, autistic consciousness, and life on the autism spectrum. Today I'm going to do less of a practical video and more of a just curious uh, kind of history video actually. I was reading a book on Audible, well listening to a book on Audible, it's called Unbound. I have it right here, how eight technologies made us human and brought our world to the brink. And it's the history of eight crucial technologies that human beings used that made us human, that created a uh, civilization that kind of transformed our world for good and for bad ways. Starts out with like the spear. He's claiming that the spear actually made human beings upright. And I thought that's a really cool perspective. I've never heard that before. But I was listening to this chapter about symbolic representation. And, you know, he's talking about language, talking about writing, uh, but he's also talking about art, talking about cave painting. And if you've ever seen those paintings in, a, in, in France and in, elsewhere in Europe, these beautiful, stunning, uh, crazily realistic paintings of bison and horses and all of these things, uh, he, talks about, uh, he talks about them and they, how they kind of require... Uh, a kind of an, an ability to abstract yourself from, from the world, so to speak. But here's the thing, and I've read about these paintings before. They're really good. Like, they're better than they should be. If you know anything about art, you'll know that the skills you would have needed to create these paintings require techniques that were only developed in the Renaissance. You know, the techniques of perspective, the techniques of, of, of certain types of modeling. And this is right at the beginning of human history. These are some of the first paintings ever made, and they're better than they should be. They're better than medieval art. They're better than lots of kinds of art. And the question is, what the hell's going on? Why is this the case? And there's a controversial paper but I think I really believe in that says um, we need to look to autistic individuals to explain why. If you've ever seen autistic savants, uh, usually they're nonverbal or less verbal, uh, who are really good artists, they don't use those techniques that were developed in the Renaissance. They don't use the outlining or the perspective. They just see the whole thing, like I talked about in that video a while ago that's popular. You know, the whole gestalt, the whole whole, the whole everythingness of the thing, and they just reproduce it, whole and part together. It's not distinguished. And it's accurate. It's beautiful. And they're just like filling it out like this. You know, that's not how art is supposed to work. But they do it. And it's amazing. And, and uh, I was actually, I found out about this paper from this book. It's by a, a woman who really influenced a lot of my thinking about autism, Olga Bogdashina. Uh, she has an autistic son and she's an autism researcher, uh, kind of a, a more idiosyncratic one, but one I think who really understands a lot of it. Um, she's where I got the gestalt idea from. But, but uh, it makes you think, were these Paleolithic people um, tapping into the same type of, type of consciousness that many of us on autism experience. And it's worth noting that this type of consciousness has everything to do with language. Now, language is interesting with autism. Some of us are hyperverbal. I'm a hyperverbal one and I'm bad at art. Some of us are less verbal. And you'll find that the autistic savants who are really, really good at art without trying to be, now that's the key point, without trying to be, tend to be less verbal. And there's good reason for that, because when we learn to think in language, we learn to see words. And we learn to see the thing as the word, as the noun, like I said, and we stop seeing the thing. We stop seeing the wiggles of the thing. We stop seeing the, the texture of the thing. And that's what perhaps makes these savants such good artists, is that they don't put in Goethe's phrase, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, he was, an, he was a poet and a scientist, he says, how difficult it is to not put the sign in place of the thing. Well, I think as many of us as autistic people don't put the sign in place of the thing. Now, many of us are really good at using the sign, using language. Many of us are really good at paying attention to the thing. I just think that they 
somehow do, they, they don't often go together as much as they do in neurotypical people. But anyway, makes you wonder, were these shamanic, were, I, I kind of spoiled where I'm going, but were these uh, ancient people uh, autistic somehow? And I probably think, probably not in the way you think, but I think I'm really onto something though, which is that perhaps through some altered state of consciousness, maybe through some kind of psychedelic practice or some ritual practice, we're accessing a type of consciousness that we experience as autistic people, a less linguistic consciousness, a less uh, verbal consciousness that pays attention to the wiggliness of the world. Uh, there's a philosopher, his name is Henri Bergson, who talks about how um, there is a state of innocent perception, a kind of like uh, pure intuition, pure perception that, uh, that, that beholds the world without mediating concepts and how that's a good thing. And one of the things Olga Bogdashina talks about is that that is basically what autistic people experience is an unmediated experience of the world. And it makes you wonder, did these autistic, did these uh, people in, in, in these caves, were they tapping into an autistic consciousness? Were they tapping into uh, a vivid, uh, buzzing, blooming, to use William James's phrase, world that is unmediated by language? I think so. I think it may have had something to do with psychedelics. There is a relationship between autism and psychedelics, by the way. Lots of the same areas of the brain are, re are relevant. Sometimes psychedelics can actually remove or really heal some of the negative parts of autism while leaving some of the positive parts. But that's something I want to leave you to think about is uh, in what ways does autism make us better artists? Does it make us better able to perceive the world? Does it make us better able to pay attention and to notice? So I'm Christian Swenson. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, or click the bell. I think that's what people do, and I'll talk to you on Tuesday.